Now on this channel, I usually cover things NBA, but today I decided to change things a little bit and cover basketball internationally, and that is mainly the Olympics. Now there also is the FIBA World Cup that happens every once in a while, and those are also exciting to watch, but of course what the main players of the NBA actually care about at least those that want to actually play in those events, they care about the Olympics more. So I want to talk about the Olympics and how the USA is inevitably going to lose at some point in the near future. And I do think it's going to come sooner rather than later. And the reason is pretty simple. The world is catching up to them. And I'm not saying that the US is going to stagnate or get worse, but I'm just saying that the competition is getting that much more fierce. You have teams like Greece, who this year had a good showing in the Olympic qualifiers, but unfortunately lost to the Czech Republic. And there's no, there's not any notable players that we can see from the Czech Republic that we know of in the NBA. And, you know, if there is, I've never heard of him. And I apologize if he's actually somebody that people know. Now, the Greece team didn't have Antetokounmpo in their lineup. Actually, they did. But they didn't have Giannis Antetokounmpo in the lineup. They had his younger brother, Kostas, and the Kumpo, and they almost made it to the Olympics. Now, you have teams like Lithuania. They lost against Slovenia in the Olympic qualifying game, which marks the first time they miss out on the Olympics since they became independent from the Soviet Union in the early 1990s. And I'm sure that with a pair like Jonas Valchunas and Demontis Sabonis, you're going to be seeing them in the Olympics next time. A team that I was surprised didn't make it to the Olympics is Serbia, and Serbia is quite interesting. They have a lot of players from the NBA in Serbia, and Serbian basketball has been a staple in international basketball as far as when Vlade Divac used to play in the NBA, and you have a lot of people saying that Serbia is a team to look out for. They did very well in the FIBA World Cup in 2019, and when you have guys like Jokic and Bogdanovic from Atlanta, Shalika from the Warriors, you can't go wrong. Now you have the team from Down Under, the Australians. I know I butchered the accent. Okay, don't I don't care. They have offensive firepower like no other. Okay, they have Patty Mills who's really good, and they have Del Vadova. He's not bad, but you know he's good too. You have Ingles and Josh Giddy as well might come into this team later on, and alongside with Aaron Baines who may add to the defensive presence and. Ben Simmons, man, if he actually comes and plays for this team in the Olympics next time. This team, you got to be careful for, man. You got to look out for this team, especially the U.S. They got to be careful because if Ben Simmons joins them and plays in the Olympics, oof. Okay, so now we got the team that they beat to get that bronze medal, and that's Slovenia. Slovenia is pretty good. And the most notable player, of course, is Luka Doncic. He's a rising star in the NBA. Could be an all-time great. He has that potential. That's how good he's already been in his career. Now, of course, there's also Goran Dragic, but I'm pretty sure Goran is going to retire from playing international basketball at some point. And his brother, Zoran, he's going to play, and he's going to be a very good asset. And they already have good players that have settled themselves in professional basketball in Europe. And the Slovenian team is only looking to go up from the last performance that they've had in the Olympics. Now Spain is a very interesting team because they didn't look so good, but they also looked very good at the same time. It looked like they were going to beat the US, but then they didn't. And all of that culminates to them now having to figure out where they go from here on out. They have aging stars like Gasol and of course Paul Gasol. <laughs> I didn't expect him to play, but he's not going to be playing anymore. And you have stars that are aging, but you also have players that are you know, developing into the Spain international basketball team. And it's interesting to see how they're going to look in the future. So again, look out for them because they've always been a good team, but they might shake up some things in the next Olympics event. In my opinion, this is the best team next to the United States, hands down, okay? Team France. Of course, they played the US to get that gold medal, but they ended up losing and getting a silver instead, which is a very good consolation prize, might I add. France is excellent. Okay, they have players not only from the NBA that are crucial and have pivotal roles in this Olympic team, but they also have players from European leagues that also play 
pivotal roles and it's quite interesting that mix and blend that they have they have gobert of course who is a defensive powerhouse and then you have batum who is quite a good player to have and he's aging but he still has some legs under him they had gershon yabusele who played for the boston celtics a couple years ago who really showed up and he really shined in this olympics and look to see players like TLC in Brooklyn and Fio Maladon in OKC and Sekou Dumbuya who's also now in Brooklyn. And they're going to contribute in very big ways. Oh, and did I mention that there's a high school prospect that's 17 with a 7 foot free height and an 8 foot wingspan? He goes by the name of Victor Wembeyama who trained with Rudy Gobert. And when Gobert trained with him, he said he's a combination of him, Porzingis, and Kevin Durant. This guy is built different, bro. Look at his highlights. You'll thank me later. Now, I know there's more teams that I could have talked about, like the Nigerian team, who is the country with the most NBA players on their roster outside the U.S. And you have the German team who have the Wagner brothers. And you have the Italian team that's pretty good with Gallinari and Nico Magnon. But the last team I want to talk about isn't any of those teams. It's a team that... Many people are familiar with in some context because really they're close to the U.S. But they didn't really show out this year. And when they did try to qualify for the Olympics, they ended up losing to the Czech Republic. And people aren't looking to them as much because of the roster that they've built up in those games. The Canadian team, Team Canada, is a very interesting team because they have a lot of good players that didn't even play in that game against the Czech Republic, okay? You have the likes of Jamal Murray, Shea Gilgus Alexander, Dylan Brooks, Kelly Olynyk, Brendan Clark, Chris Boucher. Man, if you put all these guys together and if they try to work something out there with the likes of Corey Joseph, Trey Lyles, Andrew Wiggins, RJ Barrett, Nikel, Alexander Walker, and all these guys that already played in that roster, you can get you can have yourself a very dangerous team, okay? And the potential is there for them to make the Olympics next time, right? And a lot of people are going to sleep on them, but I think that's exactly what makes them the sleeper team, in my opinion. So if you want to look out for a team that might come out of nowhere, look to Team Canada because I know I'm biased because I'm Canadian, but I'm pretty confident that this team is going to come in with a bang.